we have seen during the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of these drug overdoses increase as a result of more people being at home. So what are the other contributing factors to that? Uh, yeah, we certainly suspect that the pandemic is playing a role. You know, nobody knows for sure right now. It's just too early to tell. But we certainly know that uh, things like the pandemic um, um, produce a, an exorbitant amount of stress on people, and stress leads to behaviors that uh, can be disruptive in people's lives. And certainly, uh, people look for outlets for stress. Some of those uh, out outlets are healthy, and some are unhealthy. And certainly, turning to drug use or um, exacerbating underlying drug use uh, can be one of those unhealthy outlets. And what are those, some of the potential solutions to this issue? Of course, you just can't go from you know, thousands to zero, but there are ways of reducing those numbers. So what exactly are the best ways to combat that? Yeah, I think that's the right way to look at it because this has been, you know, um, a decades-long problem, and we've never truly uh, gotten over any drug crisis, whether it be opiates or drugs of the 70s or you know whatever the uh, most popular drug is uh, at the time. And right now, it appears to be opiates, and, and that's a lot of different reasons. And so there are multiple ways to approach it. And at, at ProMedica, we have uh, uh, a number of different grants that we're working with in order to reduce the effects of the opioid ep epidemic. Most of those are centered around um, preventing op opiate overdose deaths and there's a variety of ways that you can do that you know some of its education some of it is enrolling people uh, who have a substance use disorder into the right programs uh, some of it has to do with um, uh, providing Narcan which is an antidote to opiates to people who are at risk for it and then some of it is reducing exposure to opiates from the beginning we know that uh, a certain number of people that when exposed to opiates even for a very short period of time will go on to develop an opiate use disorder um, and then opiates, unfortunately, are something that we have to use to control pain in the hospital setting under certain situations. Uh, opiates aren't the only thing, though. So there's a number of different things that we use to control pain. And uh, in, in one of our programs, what we're doing is using those other things to their maximum extent and um, providing our physicians, our nurse practitioners, our nurses with the right tools and techniques to not always need to go to opiates for certain painful conditions. And then approaching patients that have chronic pain conditions the right way and not just perpetuating the use of opiates, but again, providing those alternate treatments to opiates uh, so that they, they have more tools in the toolbox. And we often look at this as a national issue, and it is, but also locally, it's another big issue that we're seeing and in different parts of town, it can be worse than others, but it's really a local issue that we're also dealing with here as well. So kind of give me an, uh, an idea of the local landscape when it comes to drug overdoses. Right. Uh, so uh, nationally, we're seeing this year uh, over 100,000 deaths, which is um, uh, huge. I mean, it's, uh, um, uh, it, it's higher than it's ever been. So uh, the pandemic clearly seems to have played a role there. Uh, Ohio Ohio is actually one of the top five states uh, for opiate overdose, so it definitely uh, touches us uh, very closely uh, in Ohio. Um, you mentioned fentanyl, but there are other opiates that, that are out there. Fentanyl is one type of opiate. Uh, most fentanyl comes from uh, out east, meaning uh, across the globe, it comes from uh, places like China and India. Uh, some of it is routed up through Mexico, but uh, it, it's all uh, coming from external so sources. And uh, clearly, Ohio is one of those states that is showing uh, a demand, which means that we have a lot of people that have uh, an opiate use disorder here. And finally, what are some of the signs of someone on the path to overdosing and how can you uh, potentially step in to help someone if they're having an issue um, with drugs? Yeah, so um, it isn't always obvious, somebody who might have an opiate use disorder or any drug problem for, for that matter. Uh, and so what we really look for are people who are disengaging with life. Uh, so they, they stop leading productive lives. They become more reclusive and uh, they uh, change their friend groups. Uh, they change people who they associate with. They might have a, a, um, a decline in their personal uh, appearance, their level of hygiene, their ambition, their uh, willingness to uh, engage with other people, willingness to go out and find work work and uh, find uh, themselves distracted with other things. And then, and then that evolves into uh, uh, worsening behaviors. So uh, what we see is people actually uh, start to engage in criminal activity that, that hadn't done that before because they become uh, desperate on their dependency on the medication. So recognizing those signs and symptoms in friends and family members, referring them to uh, appropriate treatment centers. There's uh, literally dozens of treatment centers uh, across our area, uh, uh, anything from, uh, from bright view to the Zeph Center. There's others in the area, but there's there's quite a few. And it's definitely an issue that doesn't discriminate. We're all affected by this in our community and of course nationally. And Dr. Brian Kaminsky of Prometica, thanks for taking the time, time to chat with me on this topic. All right. Thank you, Jaden.